Hey, Avian here. So I'm going to try and teach some of you how to play Lulu in the style that I play it. So we'll give it our best shot. We've got to have to go through the runes, the masteries, some of the spells, and a little bit of the gameplay. Now the runes that I use vary. The first thing that I'm going to say is, if I'm against someone such as Caitlyn or Elaine, that there's going to be a lot of harass and a, a, a chance that I'm going to take a lot of damage back, as well as giving it out, I'll run these runes. Now, 0, 13, 17, you can see where to put the points. You take the pickpocket because you get gold off melee attacking. I run the mana biscuit in the ward because I'm playing aggressive. Um, it could be useful to put those points in this one here to have shorter uh, items. But it's, um, I think, your preference. Personally, I prefer the mana biscuit and the pot because of how much gold it gives you. Um, Next up would be the other runes which I most commonly use. These would be the um, 0921. The reasons being, again, just, you know, short cooldowns and faster movement speed. Having the early ward and the early pot and lane helps you sustain or keep vision and keep doing that damage early, which is what I like to do when I play Lulu. And, um, of course, the gold regen being able to take a little bit more, more damage in lane. So that's about it for the runes. Now, uh, for the masteries, for the masteries, now for the runes, we have, um, I mean, pretty common to run these runes. People probably prefer to run three gold per ten quints, but I actually prefer an extra bit of mana because of how aggressive I play. So I run nine armor, mag uh, times nine magic concentration marks times 9 armor seals, times 9 magic regen with 5 glyphs, 2 G per 10 quints, and 1 armor quint. And th that's pretty much it. Sometimes I swap it around and go for the 3 quints and not the armor. It just it just depends. But personally, I prefer having that extra armor. So the summoner spells, I always run flash, and the majority of the time I run exhaust. Flash is extremely essential for repositioning yourself and much, much more. Exhaust, again, you can win your lane with it if you time it correctly. Say Graves dives in to do all his burst, exhaust him. You can't do that, you can do yours before he does his. So you've got to kind of consider those spells. Heal's useful since it's being buffed, but it's not what I prefer to use. But you know, you might have your own style. Um, so other than that, basically the item builds that I'm going to go through. I start with a fairy charm, one pot, one pink ward, two green wards, um, I go back, I try and get my side stone, and then I try and get my feel of stone, and then I try and get my boots, and then after that I'll get my chalice, and then my ruby. And then after this, it's pretty much getting into mid to late game. Um, you position yourself well, so you don't need to finish your boots before this point, in my opinion. Um, you, you should take the cooldown ones at this point, but Mercury Treads aren't a bad option if they have a lot of CC on their team and you keep getting caught in it you can't avoid it. Um, one of the best bits of advice I can ever give you as a support is to avoid as much AoE as possible and you probably won't need the Mercury Treads. Um, I go into Mikkel's Crucible because it's just an extremely amazing item. Cle uh, cleanse and heal for your AD carry. Uh, Shirelia's, which is again great skewing kills, retreating, counter engaging, engaging, many more. Locket, which is generally just a great all round, quick little sort of shield for everyone, which can be useful for AoE. Stark's Favor. I don't often get this, but it is useful, um, especially if you have one or two or more ADs in your like attack speed based champions in the game. But um, other viable options, as you can see there, and uh, Aegis. And don't forget to buy wards, so important, okay? The next thing is the skills that you level. Usually I am finding myself maxing Q first, onto the W, and then onto the Q, um, uh, onto the E, beg your pardon. Obviously prioritize R whenever it's up, it's your ultimate, it's incredibly strong. Um, I'll commentate on the laning phase, some of the, the tricks you can do with the skill set, but generally Glitter Dancers are decaying slow when you hit the enemy with it. It's quite hard to kind of get the 
the fully understanding the feel of how the lance works with your cursor. So just try that out a little bit. Picks can be a shield, or it can be um, you can put picks on an enemy, which does a little bit of damage. And you can do all sorts of things with glitter lance from there. And then you've got whimsy. Oh, the voice is going. Um, ah, again, it's incredible for your tanks. It's incredible to save people. Now the laning phase. I like to lane against. Um, sorry, I like to lane with a vein because he is quite weak early, and you can make up for that with your poke. Corky, Ez, and Graves all have brilliant gap closers combined with your skill set of being able to like movement speed boost, knock people up and things. It's really, really fun. I think the worst lane for Lulu would probably be Soraka Sivir. Soraka because she can just sustain all of your poke. Sivir because she has the spell shield. Um, and I think that um, Lulu is very strong a strong pick when you're playing against Vayne and Cogmore because you can shut them down early. Katarina because you have many ways of stopping her ult so if you save your abilities to do that she's not going to get to do the whole ult and a lot of good Katarina players wait for the cooldowns of like your team so they can go in but if you just save something for her and then obviously a Kali you can put your Rion she can't go stealth you can do all sorts of things for her which is always great and that's that so we'll go into the gameplay We've got um, Lulu and uh, Ezreal bot lane versus Vayne and Nunu. And I'm just going to sort of commentate what I'm doing in the laning phase and what I sort of hope to do. So the starting items that I get are the uh, Fairy Charm, one pink ward, two green wards, three, uh, two pots, and obviously the starting items. And straight away when the game starts, I rush mid. I just get there as quick as I can to cover the enemy running at um, our blue buff or our red buff. I mean, their team, this game, isn't that great for invading, so I don't predict an invade. But I'll go anyway, just in case. Um, S is bot lane, as you can see. Um, and I do actually change it on um, the lol recorder to show only where the purple team can see the team that we're on so yep i'm going to be doing lots of guides coming up make, make sure you uh hit the hit the uh the nail on the head with the feedback you give me you know if you if you want different styles of, of guides things like that make sure you let me know because i'm not going to be able to deliver it the way you want it um, so basically getting to bot lane and usually the, the skills that I take first is dependent on the lane but I know that when there's a vein in the lane that he's quite weak early especially if Nunu takes W first you can have a lot more harass with Ez and Lulu so I always take Q first in this case and straight away when they come in the lane I just start harassing them I mean it's always a good idea to tell your AD if you're not in duo that you play an aggressive or a passive support but I mean bear that in mind so you've got the laning phase about to start just sitting in the bush there and it's quite a good place to sort of get first blood if they face check because you have the slow I've got my, uh, my, my tea and have a drink good old British tea so I stay in there, Ez starts CSing, and you can see straight away Q, which I miss, which is fantastic, not. The, the, the main problem with Q is it pushes your lane. Um, but I know that they don't have any sustain early. So, and, and if we pop their pots, and we pop our pots, it's okay, because I have my shield. So, like, really aggressive early, and when I have a cooldown, you know, sit at the back. Going in constantly making sure the wards are up it's important to know the jungle uh, how long it takes for their jungler to clear so they've got Fiora roughly about three minutes so expect a gank around then um, so but yeah the laning phase very early depending on who you're against and um, the majority of the lanes I play it very aggressive and kind of if I feel like I need to level my shield a bit more I will but just really aggressive keep hitting that uh, keep hitting that that Q um, and again you saw there that I put the shield on Nunu 
and uh, well, the shield. I put picks on Nunu, and when Vayne walked out, I used Glitter Lance and did that. And you can do some quite cool tricks if you put your picks on an ally or a minion or an enemy minion. You can put it on them and fire your Q from it. Um, and you know, it's it's ways to hit people safely as such. Um, so there when I missed that queue before, it's just a waste of mana. It's important to try and ensure that you're hitting them. Just because I'm a little noob, I didn't. The reason being that, you know, you you need to conserve your mana well in lane or use it effectively. And if you're missing, you're not doing that. Um, so, I mean, I think you, could, you can use Smart Cast for Lulu's queue, but I prefer to aim because it's quite strange how it works. You'll figure that out. If you just pick it with the cursor you'll see. Um, so Ez very comfortably overextends. An important note, because we're so overextended I warded the tri-brush even though I had the lane brush warded just be because it's safer. Um, so you can see a ping going down to show Fiora because she showed up on the ward which is at our race. Um, what else to talk about in the laning phase just um, max your Q I tend to level Q um, then E then Q um, as shown in the uh, the abilities I level at the start you basically want to just harass harass especially with the Vader Nunu lane <sighs> slurp um, I mean again, just sitting at the back there and just waiting. And one of the nice things about Lulu is that she has everything a support like all the supports have. She has an amazing ult which knocks people up, provides that great amount of HP. If on a tank it's even more effective HP. You have your Q to slow, of course your W for the speed buff or to polymorph and your E is a shield. And the great thing about W is you can combine it with exhaust so what you want to be doing is using your W and then once they go back to normal form and they can do damage again use your exhaust then. So just maximize the amount of time you can minimize the damage which is really strong and especially when you reach 6 it's like 3.5 seconds of no damage. So there we are Fiora comes to gank and I have to flash and it's a bit of a bad call because I, I bet that sh we could have seen a run at the tribush um, ward if we were looking so another really important tip is is BAP awareness you, as a support player you don't have tunnel vision on CSing you don't have anything to worry about other than like harassing or protecting your AD so just every two or three seconds try and glance at the minimap and the chances are in that time you'll see them run past a ward if they do um, so again putting those wards down it's important to see where I ward oh, Fiora's back so I use my W and get away quite safely tell my AD carry or mumble and we leave it's unfortunate Shen didn't ping to say he was coming because then we probably could have got a kill out of it but that's that so very early it's really important to keep your wards down because you're playing aggressive make sure you carry a pink for your for your dragon objectives um, or note where I'm placing the wards and there's a guide for that that I put up, you can check that out. Um, just because it's such an early drake, you know, seven and a half minutes, you've all got to share a bit of damage and your whole team has to come. Because seven minutes on from now, you could all have more HP. And basically, you want to um, keep everything watered if you're playing aggressive. Make sure you use your mana correctly, like you're hitting your spells. Hitting skill shots is really important. Um, Look, you don't hit them all and you obviously miss some, but just something to try and improve on. Um, and th that's that. So on my first back, I get a Sidestone. After I have my Sidestone, I uh, get a Philo Stone um, for the gold and the, the mana and 
the health regen and then boots and all I'm doing here is stopping them from backing it's a bit risky when you think about it because if Vayne came on to me with Newton's W he could probably condemn me um, so maybe it was better to ward but as long as you're being careful and just max range with your Q you should be okay and just the longer you stop them backing the less the more time they're wasting so we saw them coming down on my ward we're leaving my positioning here is at the back and the AD doesn't spot it so he has to flash and E out they dive onto me because we have to swap because I have more HP so I have to ult myself Ez dies unfortunately I guess that's an important thing to talk about is positioning like if a jungle's coming to gank don't run straight back to your tower from the, the brush in the river you know run towards the, the bot bush that has no vision but diagonally towards your tower so you're not just running sideways you're also running away and sideways you you want to create a bigger gap um, and by doing that then Ez had more like I had more room to, to look after Ez, um, so that's that. Um, next items that I bought, I guess, was. I mean, it depends. Usually, I would rush um, Chalice after I had my Boots, Sidestone, and Feeler Stone, but um, with their comp, with having Kazix, I'm really scared of Kazix at the minute. I think he's really strong, so I uh, decided to get Shirelia's first this game to help my AD get away if anything bad happens. So there we go, we saw Fiora again. Ping let the team know and just back off safely. Oh, the, the tea is finished. The tea is finished. Next up is Snowball to the face. And sitting in my chair weirdly. So again in the laning phase, just shield if you need to, but just keep that harass up. Um, by now your, your ranks and your uh, Q are going to be really sort of, they're going to be feeling it, they're going to have to use their pots to stay in the lane and as long as you can sort of out damage their sustain that's great so Fiora invades, doesn't go well, put picks on her, slow her and the positioning there I think is a little bit bad, I get caught in the Nunu ult just a little bit but majority of the time you see what I'm doing trying to keep my distance from the guys and just slow them take the kills um, obviously we killed Drake before so time it so this is um, again missed my cue there but if I had to hit it maybe it would have been a kill who knows um, so I don't know whether or not we get this kill oh, so now this is interesting I tank the tower thinking like yeah my team wants to dive so as a support you can tank the tower because you don't do any of the damage the problem was Kha'Zix has quite long range so you basically what I did there was nearly kill myself I had to ult shield and get a shenel to survive so in, in that sense it would have been better for Cho or Ez to tank it because they're higher HP and just shield them or something but never mind so just again at the back without any mana so all you do is you sit at the back whether you have mana or not and just try and put yourself in a really safe position um, I can't really say much more so here we go polymorphed him and then exhausted him just to stop his damage over a longer period of time rather than just polymorph exhaust what's the point in exhausting someone who's polymorphed um, not much I can do here shield myself hit him um, we we killed Drake around six minutes ago because it was like seven something and I took the timer in game I tell all of my team and they all back out so I say to my AD let's do Drake so we we made a play bot and everybody backed off but because we had the Drake timer we were able to stay and take it so that like that really just showed the importance of timing things effectively um, I mean, as I'm sure you're all aware, the blue and red buffs are 5 minutes each, the Baron's 7 minutes and the Dragon's 6. Um, I mean, if there's a lot to take in, I'll, uh, there's going to be a little uh, short list at the end of, of the main things to take away. 
Um, so generally, you know, quite an aggressive lane early on for us. Um, I mean, I'm going very much in harassing because I know that we have a stronger early game compared to Vayne and Nunu. Sitting at the back here, just putting my slow out. If you just watch my positioning, you'll see that I'm never, like, I'm not, I'm not a tank, so I'm not Shen. But I'm still with the team, but I'm just at, at the back in the middle. Diving towers, taking towers as a team. I'm so sleepy. I'm so sleepy. Uh, Shen ults brand. I don't know why. I mean, this brand wasn't too great. But, anyway. Um, Ez is, what's his score? Let's have a look. 4-1. So we've played pretty okay bot lane. We've got a couple of kills, especially we've had a lot of help. It's always great. Um, and again, you see my positioning, just sitting at the back. Um, throwing out a shield, throwing out a, like the W is the slow. Generally, you want to put your W on um, on allies that can... If you're chasing, like the best person to put it on now would probably be Cho or Shen. Because maybe more Shen. Because Shen can just taunt, whereas Cho, his Q is a, like a skill shot that they could just run out of. So that it's important to note that. Um... Yeah, don't back anyway, silly. One of the biggest mistakes you'll probably ever get annoyed at is when you back somewhere silly and their team comes and kills you. Not funny. Um, so yeah, brand farm, farm, farm. I join him because I know that there's nothing left for me to do at bot. Like, we've, we've done everything we can at this point. So, um, going for towers is always a good idea. Next up is their blue. The reason we're at their blue now is because I know that you kill a blue at around 7 minutes. Um, especially if you're Fiora jungle. So um, you basically think 7 plus 5 well, roughly 12. So, say 12, 10, their blue comes up. Then next up, you have, um, say, 17, 30, their drake dies. So we know that be by waiting at the drake at that time that it was going to spawn, or it is about to spawn. And if you watch the mini-map, I think it spawns at about 20.30 or something. So, it, a little bit off with the timing, but it's that's nothing of fault, it's just the time that they killed it, it's bad luck really. Um, where's their blue? There we go, it's spawned. The blue of dumb, but we're not gonna get that, so. Jax teleports down. I know Drake's gonna spawn, tell my team, we all go and we kill it. Fairly good. So that's three Drakes, and their team's nowhere near it, doesn't have any wards or anything, and they're just not timing it, or they haven't got the timer one or the other but you need to be that guy in a game that times stuff don't rely on other people to do it because they they won't truth be told um, yeah getting caught alone I think Vayne dies here yep okay this is the final tips that I'm going to give you Basically, to remember that you're warding correctly, you're timing things, conserving mana, and uh, hitting skill shots. Really four important things. Map awareness, I didn't have to burn flash when Fiora ganked because you could see him on a ward if you rewind. Team positioning is really important. Be at the back, don't get caught out by yourself. Stay with the AD, stay with the team. The biggest tip ever is to avoid all the AoE. Don't get caught in it, you'll just die. And use spells on your allies and enemies is a big part of decision making that you'll just get better at when you become more experienced with Lulu. Um, I hope you liked the guide, I hope it wasn't too long. Um, the quality will keep getting better and things getting smoother as I improve my skills and probably a little bit faster. 
Um, but if you liked it, leave a comment on what you thought. And that's all I have to say. See you later.